Hey guys, today we're checking out this gimbal, the Weeple 3S. It's pretty fantastic. Let's see what this thing can do. So I've been using the Weeble 3S for a while now, doing weddings, real estate, and the creative kind of stuff with my friend Emma you saw in the beginning. And so far, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. They have always excelled in the gimbal world, I think being right up there with some of the heavy hitters and I don't know, something about just the layout and the features and how it worked just kind of clicked with me. And you know, this new 3S is no exception. Everything they've done well before, like the strong motors and great design and comfort, of course, is there, but just, you know, elevated just a little bit. Plus, I've always just liked the name Weeble. It's a little silly, but kind of awesome. I love faking all kinds of cinematic movements with gimbals, like dolly shots, slider shots, crane shots, tracking and steady cam like shots. I mean, sure, this isn't like better than any of those things when it comes to the final results, but let's be honest for one man band crews or smaller productions or elevating stuff like events and weddings, gimbals like the Weeble 3S are insanely useful. I think the footage this thing can get is really pretty fantastic. I mean, I've been a fan of them for a long time. I actually bought the original crane, the first one they released, uh, used from Max Yuryev, and I haven't looked back since then, so thanks. Thanks, Max. <laughs> I really do like the design choices and upgrades from that for the most part. It's the Sling 2.5, as they call it, and the wrist support, which, you know, this is some of my favorite design elements. Um, getting low angles and doing this under sling mode just like this, very easy to transition or even go in between. It just works. You, oh, you can also adjust this out to get more of a double handle grip like this. Um, but, you know, I usually end up leaving it more towards the back personally. Now this wrist support is another interesting aspect of this gimbal where you can, again, toollessly adjust it up and down and it really just helps you you know, distribute this weight a little bit handier instead of pulling down on your wrist, it's kind of pushing up against it. Um, and that's just really handy. I think this is a lot better than the one from the Weeble 3, which was good, but I felt like the curve and the material wasn't as nice. With this wrist support, I actually feel that support on my wrist a lot more. It's just all just a little bit improved. I don't know if it's worth going from the 3 to 3S just for this, but you know, actually it might be. <laughs> but wait, we are not done towards the bottom. So when you first get this gimbal, you're actually going to screw on this plate onto the bottom here. And the, this kind of enables the entire sling and wrist support to be removed. So if you've got a really small setup or you wanna use different cameras, it's really nice. And you can just slide it back in, lock it down. You see this, we got a lock, we got a button, lock release button, which is a pretty common way that a lot of the mounting points work on this gimbal. But this allows you to have a more beefy setup for a bigger camera like 24 to 70, or a little bit smaller setup if you're gonna use a little lens like this 20 to 60 kit lens that comes with the S5 and S5 II. Also just the build quality and the grip. The grip is like a mix of rubber, nice plastic. It's all very soft and smooth. And we also see on this side, the fast charging USB-C and the various controls and things around. Speaking of all the controls, you got a customizable trigger and wheel on the front, which can either switch between modes or change settings on your camera. Oh, you also double tap the trigger to center your gimbal. So if it's like tilted up in the air, you want it to get level, double tap will center. Triple tap is selfie mode. So there you go, that's fun. On the right hand side, you've got the power and menu buttons, which you know I think you could figure out what those do, and the scroll wheel, which is going to switch items in the menu, but if you hold it down, it actually turns on a light and also changes the settings for that light as well. In the middle, you've got the screen, which is 
just as good as it needs to be. And on the left side, you've got your record button for if you have it connected via cable or Bluetooth, a joystick, and the M button, which is the mode button, which switches between modes. Speaking of modes, let's go over all seven modes in this camera. So one of the main modes here is the pan follow mode. So you can see it'll kind of follow my movements left and right, but when it comes to the up and down, it stays pretty much locked in. So you can do some fun kind of movements like this. And if you ever need to tilt up and down, I just use the joystick. So when you hit that mode button again, you get to lock mode, which kind of just locks everything in place. So you can see, no matter what I do, it's gonna to try to keep this camera completely still. So that's a pretty fun way to use this thing to get certain types of shots. And then lastly, we've got follow, which will tilt up and down and otherwise behave very similar to pan follow mode. But we have four more modes to get through. Now, the next three modes are what I call the spicy modes. So if you double tap M, you're gonna first get into POV. So this is basically going to rapidly kind of follow your movements even in a rolling motion to get some really interesting shots. So I'm not sure how often people are gonna use this mode, but it's cool that it's there. Double tap again, and the camera points straight up into the air. This activates vortex mode, which is best used in the underslung mode. And now here, it's kind of awkward, but here you get this sort of vortex rotating kind of movement, which can be cool to add some interesting kind of motion to your stuff. And you double tap M again, you go to portrait mode, which is not the same as mounting the camera sideways. We'll talk about that later, but it kind of gives you a quick and dirty kind of vertical video mode here. So it's uh, you can only use this in the undersling mode, which is like the difference, um, but still could be useful. Now our secret seventh mode is actually called go mode very similar to POV mode, except it won't roll. Um, you get this by just holding down the trigger, and then you get this mode that kind of will rapidly follow your movements up and down, left and right, but again, no rolling. So this is kind of, I think, supposed to be made for sports or really fast moving subjects, or, you know, say you're in regular pan follow, something crazy starts happening, you can hold go and get over there pretty quickly. So that's kind of the idea behind go mode. Of course, we have our typical kind of three axis gimbal setup up top. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it definitely is still working really nicely with this gimbal. Um, we've got the locks, we've got everything. The biggest physical feature here up top at least is the camera plate, which actually has a few tricks up its sleeve, uh, which could interest some people. So the horizontal left and right, you loosen that, slide it down, hit a button underneath, this entire plate can come off here. There's actually a piece which is perfectly grooved out to go on vertically here. So you put the camera on, you lock it down. It should be basically balanced already for vertical shooting. Um, you might have to go to the left and right a little bit. And at that point, you're basically balanced for vertical video shooting, which, you know, is not my favorite way to shoot but it is necessary and sometimes you don't need open gates. Sometimes the client doesn't care and they just want that vertical video setup. So, you know, it's a cool feature. I like it. It is what it is. Um, and that's the, the world we're living in these days, whether you like it or not. The audio feature that used to be on the Weeble 3 back here is gone, but you can still attach USB-C to the camera if your camera doesn't support the Bluetooth control, which is another feature this thing has. So yeah, obviously I think the changes made from the previous Weeble series either is neutral or good for the most part. You get trade-offs with the plate, that's fine. You lose your audio, but nobody really used it too much and you gain some built-in Bluetooth controls directly to your camera if your camera supports it. You do get a little downgrade in the like 20 plus hour battery from the 3 with 11 hours on the 3S, but 11 hours is still really long and you know, even for like a long wedding day, I'll probably be only using my gimbal for maybe two or three hours of it. And especially with the fast two hour charging time, um, if you need to top off, if you use a gimbal on like a 12, 13, 14 hour wedding day, 
Um, if you're feeling a little like it's low, you can probably charge it up over dinner and be fine. Yeah, I've never really had any issues with the motor strength, the balancing or anything like that with the intended setups, although you do get pretty close to running out of real estate on the back here with like the S5 II and the massive Lumix 24 to 70 on here. So you might have to take the eye cup off to get a little more clearance. Just it'll hit this back thing physically, but the motors will pretty easily support it. So it's more of a real estate issue, but you know, it is what it is. It, it, even with the biggest possible camera setups, I was overall really happy with the smoothness and control this gimbal gave me. You can also get a lot of features to connect via Bluetooth and but I don't know, I prefer the reliability of the USB-C cable. And I'm not just saying that because Lumix cameras are not supported. But most other cameras, like a lot of cameras are, check the compatibility. Although I have to say something about the electronic focus on the GH5 II onwards. There's an issue with Panasonic cameras where you'll get that punched in focus check, you know, that three to six times in punch in. Um, that'll activate every time you adjust focus, pretty much no matter what even if it is set to off in the camera. Not sure why that happens, but I do hope Lumix and Zeon can kind of work together because this wasn't an issue back with the GH5 or before GH5S, but it's kind of an annoying issue that kind of prevents me from using the e-focus on Panasonic cameras. But I use a lot of manual glass. Zeon makes a uh, follow focus too that you can plug in. So I use that a lot of the times, but um, for the e-focus, it would be nice to have that option. I still use it occasionally, but it's a little inconvenient to say the least. So. so yeah, if you work a lot with like Cine lenses or anamorphic lenses, things with like focus gears, that follow focus is a great additional purchase. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I really didn't have time to test or my cameras didn't support, but you know, the waypoint movement, the Bluetooth connectivity. Um, there's some really nice, great features that takes this already solid gimbal to another level of features. But it also just works for people like me who just want steady footage and to fake all these cinematic shots with reliable battery life, strong motor strength for my big, ridiculous lenses, and everything from weddings to creative films and narrative and music videos. Uh, this gimbal certainly does that and with more extra features that you might not use every day but might come in really handy every once in a while when they you know start the first dance and they turn off all the wedding lights and you gotta bust out the light on the camera or you want to try out that you know photo feature when you're kind of stuck without work for a while or you just might need it for a job or for a creative project so it's just a really solid gimbal really powerful design with versatility when it comes to a big stable setup, a little kind of more social media travel friendly type of gimbal with the strong motors of bigger gimbals you'll see. Maybe not the strongest motors, but you know, very, very competent. And this continues a line of Xeon gimbals that I have really enjoyed. You know, I started with the Crane. I, I really hated the no locking on that, but it was the early days, of course. Then the original Weeble, the Weeble S, the Weeble 3. And the Weeble 3 really felt like the first one that completely clicked with me. And this one takes everything that did and either makes it more compact and versatile or improves upon it, like the sling and the wrist. And I am very happy with this gimbal. I've worked with these guys for a long time, so I'm glad they were able to send this gimbal out to me. I do really appreciate it. Um, so take my thoughts with a grain of salt, but they didn't send me any of the previous four gimbals. Um, so um, I, I'm an actual believer in their company, and I think they make really nice products from lights to gimbals. So if you're looking to purchase a new gimbal, especially for medium to medium large sized cameras, this might be amazing. Is this gonna be the best option for the largest setups like the Blackmagic 6K or things like that? Probably not, but it handles my S5 and 2470 and my GH6 and 10 to 25 just about, especially for like this, it is so perfect. And yeah, I've used this a ton over the last few weeks since they sent it to me. So um, I can recommend this almost as much as the Weeble 3. I would only get the Weeble 3 really if you want just a tiny bit bigger of a gimbal um, or a little bit more rock solid of battery life. Other than that, the design of this, I think, is, is a lot better in most ways. So I'll stop rambling now. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you subscribe, I'll see you when I see you.